I'm back. I'm back. I'm back to y'all with another video. How y'all doing? It's gracious and blessed. Wonderful morning. The sun is shining outside. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. This is another beautiful day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Hold on a minute, y'all. Let me clean your glasses off so JoJo can see a little bit. <clears throat> All right. Okay, y'all. We're going to say a quick prayer, and we're going to get down to it. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come thanking you for another beautiful, wonderful, glorious day that you have made and blessed us to wake up to and see today. We ask you to forgive us for sin, sin, and unseen sin, dear Lord, because we keep sinning against you. And Lord, we ask you for forgiveness, and we thank you. For just saving an old rest like us, dear Lord. Thank you for laying us down last night, waking us up this morning to see this beautiful day. And as we discuss your word today, we need a word from you on how. Because we, is, we want to learn how to live a godly Christian life that you will be pleased in your sight. We ask this in your son's name, Jesus' name, we pray, amen. Glory be to God. I pray you all is having a blessed, wonderful day today. I fixed me just a little tea today. A little bit energy tea, they say, on the pack. That's pretty good. Not too bad. Not too bad. So, how are you all morning is? I pray that you have a blessed, wonderful morning. Y'all don't pay no attention to this Bible here. This is one of the Bible I done had since childhood. King James Version is old, but it's hanging on in there. I hate to throw it away. I know, y'all, I had some Bibles like that. But <clears throat> I want to come as we see the churches and it's opening back up and some of them has never closed and some was doing this and some say that and this and that. So let's do this today. Let's talk about Hebrews 13 and 8. One of we're going to head it off with that. Jesus Christ the same yesterday and today and forevermore. He's the same God. He don't change. What he did back then, he's doing now. And he going to do forever and just love us. And his word won't change. You know, he's the same today, yesterday, and forever. That's going to be in Hebrew 13 and 8. I don't want to be before you long, but, you know, I've been hearing it all the time. You know, we <clears throat> for those that took the uh, vaccine, the uh took the shot, one and two, some had to take, some just taking in one, some got a little sick after the second shot, then like it gave them the symptoms, and some they said it didn't bother, some of them just took one, and then it bothered, and some of us just haven't even took it yet, for whatever reason that we don't take it, not being scared, not being anything, but I, I don't talk against the people that are taking them. Because when you take them, you're taking them in the will of the Lord. And if you don't take them, you still take them in the will of the Lord. He's going to bless you either way. I don't try to influence nobody to take it. And I don't try to influence nobody not to take it. Everything you do, do unto the Lord. And the Lord will still bless you. And I heard that some people, you know, even ministers and some of them hadn't closed the church down. And some of them kind of talk a little bit about the churches that were closed. The, the, the pastors and the ministers that had closed the church. But I just want to say, you know, either way it go, let's stop as being believers of God. As being Christian. People that of like faith. Stop talking against one another. 
we're going to go into Romans 13. And we're going to start at the first verse. It said, let every, everything so be subjected to the government of authority. For there is no authority except from God. So it said, let everyone be subjected to authority, to the government. And, you know, because all authorities come from God. They may not know they lead and stuff, but we're supposed to have, we're supposed to obey government. You got government counselors, you got mayor, you got president. They all decide in place for a reason. And we have to get used to, you know, being submit to authority. They even give us a pastor, a leader at the church that we're supposed to be submitted to and submission to because God is still in the mix. So we have to stop that saying that uh, the government got rules over you. They got this. No, no, no. We got one head and that's God. God is the ruler over us all. When, he put, when people are put in place, they're in place for a reason. God already know the beginning. He already know the ending. So we could say that. Let me turn the music down a little bit. You all, it's that quartet singing. You know, that quartet singing going loud. Okay, let's turn that down a little bit. <clears throat> so that's why you know God give us all the same. Jesus said that I'm going away to prepare a place for you. But if I go prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto to himself. You know, and he said that he left us a confidant. He left us a spirit. Our godly spirit, our wisdom and our knowledge should let us know what to do and not to do. Everything is not for everybody and some things is for some people. God knows what's in front of us. He knows what's ahead of us. So we don't know. So we pray and ask God will and guidance to what we supposed to do. So as he guide us, we supposed to know his voice to follow him and not strangers. So is every he gonna tell everybody the same thing? No. Everything ain't for everybody. Well, I might be needing to get a word from uh what is being drinking or uh, uh, what else I used to do? Drinking, gambling, playing cards, gambling for money, gambling. Uh, whatever I was doing in the world, it might not be for somebody that had never gambled, had never been in the world. world I mean, in the world, my mom, bless her heart, rest her soul, she had never been in the clubhouse. She had never drink anything. She had never did any of that. So the word that he got for me to come out to do this and that wasn't for my mama because she had never did it. So I said that to say this. For those that, that took the shot, it was for them to take it. God is still with you, blessing you. For those that don't take it or don't have any intention on taking it and God hadn't led you there yet, you are still in the will of God. We all just got to stop saying that people taking it, they're taking it out of the government, keeping up with you. Ain't but one man that we got to worry about keeping up with us, and that's the good Lord himself. So let's support each other in whatever God will and leading us to do. Because government, we supposed to be in a mission to government. So therefore, whoever resists the authority resists the ordinance of God. And those who resist will be will be bring to judgment on themselves. Now, read this in Romans. I didn't say this. Romans 12, go in the first chapter. That's what God says, not what I says. You know, we're supposed to be in subject to government. People that govern and authorities that's over us. So stop. Uh, saying that 
the church is closed down. The the good the, the government man uh, ain't gonna do what government say. Government's in place for a reason. God said He will fight our battles. He's the judge of all. It's not us. Some things is for us to do. Then some things is not for us to do. However, God leads your leaders of your church, your pastor. However, God lead him. We follow him as he's following Christ. Pray about it. That's why it's good to have good, good, good pastors of churches. Because they're going to hear from God. Then they're going to lead you. Because if they don't lead you right on their own screen, that's the price that they have to pay. And I'm quite sure no pastor want to answer to God because you have to answer to him. So we got to stop listening to all kind of voices. If you belong to this church, as you fellowship with this church, and then, and you know that your pastor is led by God, you need to follow him as he follow Christ, because you follow Christ. He working and leading him. He's our shepherd. We are his sheep. He got to give an account for leading us wrong, and that's a big price to pay. So if you're not in a good Bible teaching church, a good, that's why he gave us this time, and at this time, to do this. Read this word for ourselves. So we won't have to be dependent on man, woman, child, whoever carrying the word. You know for yourself. We got to try to do what does said the Lord. He said that you got to study. To show yourself approval. And he said, how are you going to hear a word unless you hear it from a preacher? So yes, you got to hear it from your pastor. You got to. But you got to know it for yourself and know that they're telling you right. Because they're human just like we are. They can get in their own strength. They can get in their own they can get it out of the word of God easily, just anybody else. But do that make them any less than that? No. They're human just like we are. So love your pastor. Love your pastor wife. Love their children. Support them. Their vision, support their vision as they hear from God. Stop giving them a hard time. You know, we got to obey the word of God. He put everybody in place for a reason. So the reason that he put them in place is for him to judge, not us. Because he done already said that we got to obey those that have authority over us. So we just want to do what's right. We want to please God, not man. Not being man pleaser, but Pleasing God. God pleasing. Carry the word. Be about the word. Be about your father business. I had to read that because, you know, I heard. Excuse me. I heard. This is a preacher said this. And, you know, he gets followed. You know, he, they follow him. Saying, well, I never close the doors. And dang, that's government stuff. You don't believe a uh, whole long, you know. Not calling and saying that. He, he, I mean, if his church was still open, it was just for his church to be open. Not talking against him or nobody else. But when thus said the Lord, if he told you to keep yours and open, and you kept your, yours and open, y'all don't know how this shirt is on me. Uh, uh, how God spoke to him and his followers, but that was for him and his followers, not for other preachers. If God told them to shut the door, shut the door. So I had to get that straight because, you know, it was just in my spirit saying, uh-uh. I told him, I said, God got internet. He got Facebook. He got social media. He got YouTube. 
all this stuff that he allowed to go on. Because he can shut them down. Shut them down at any cost. He said, every everybody going to be able to heard his word. They're going to be before he come back. They're going to be able to heard this word. Would it be on your television set? Would it be on your iPhone or your Samsung phone or your tablet? Uh, yo, this and that. You going to always turn on the TV, see somebody ministering and talking about the word of God. You can go on Facebook on your phone. You're going to always see somebody ministering, talking about the word of God. You're going to go on YouTube. You're going to always see somebody ministering, talking about the word of God. You're going to go on TikTok. And that's just a dance thing or whatever they do on TikTok. Somebody going to be on there talking about the word of God. Instagram, somebody going to be on there talking about the word of God. And all this is, is nationwide around the whole world. You ain't got an excuse for not knowing this word. You ain't got an excuse for not hearing the word. Every voice is going to hear the word. Every ear is going to hear the word. What I mean. People going to be talking about no matter where you go, that word gonna get get it gonna get across to you. That's why it's good for you to pick it up and know yourself. So all this whole year, if you ain't had church service, you should have been in that word. You should be grounded and rooted. God should have a relationship with God. So when you go back in the building, because I have to let everybody know that is a place of worship. That's all it is. We are the building. We are the church. We are. We take ourselves to the building. We're the church. We are the church. Going to the building. That's a symbol of church. All the us churches there together. We're the building. Jesus lives without in us. He lives within us. We got to realize that we're walking around with the spirit of God. When you talking and you ain't able to get to church around a pastor or preacher or teacher or anybody that you trust and you get in trouble, you got to talk to the Lord for yourself. He hear you. He hear you. So when you stand before judgment day, you ain't got to be able to say, well, that old pastor told me this and it's his fault. Or oh, either I heard that woman on YouTube talking about this and that. It's her fault. So I heard this man tell me it's their fault for telling me wrong. No, no, no. It's going to be your fault. You got to answer for yourself. I tell my kids, my grandkids, everybody. Don't depend on me for your salvation. I got to stand before the Lord for myself and answer to the things that I have done wrong in this body and hadn't repent and been forgiven for things that I have done. In this temple, this body is healed. This temple, I'm living in it. The spirit of God is living in this body. I'm living in here because when I die, my soul go back to him. To be absent in this body is to be present with the Lord. Just remember that, you know. So this body here, it's going to go back to dust and dirt. and going to be bones and however it came. But I dare you. This soul is going back to the Lord. So you are responsible for what you say and you do in this body. You're going to answer for it. So repent and ask for forgiveness when you hurt people. Tell that person that you're sorry. Because you got to answer for it. Stop steering people wrong when you don't know. If I don't know it, y'all, I tell y'all, we learning this Bible together. I don't know everything. I don't. I ain't want the person to say I know everything. I wish I probably did. None of us knows everything. You know everything. You a lie and the truth ain't in you. If you always write, you a lie. The truth ain't in you. We strive to do what's right when you love the Lord. But evil is at every hand. Something, somebody, life gonna come along where it gonna shake you up. 
as long as we on this earth, none of us is perfect. But we don't strive to try to do nobody wrong. I had to say all that to get this. I ain't going to be on here long today. But I just wanted people to stop that. When it's your time to go back, and your pastor said, let's come back then, we'll go back into the house of the Lord and worship together. And if you still worship and never stop, God bless you. The church house being open, bless you. Because we all have lost. Well, I'm not going to have lost to be absent in the body to be present with the Lord. So it's not a lost. It's just we all know our loved ones that the Lord have come and got during this pandemic. And then once this is all over, maybe something else going to come until he comes. Dead in Christ is going to rise. They're going to come back with them. So I just tell you that to tell you, don't worry. Dry your eyes. God got to come get us. So everything is going to be over after a while. So anyway, then let's go back and then we'll go into Matthew 28 and 20. Where it said, I will be with you always. I just love that. I love that. Always, even until the end of the world. He said he was going to be with us always. Even until the end of the time. It seems like he ain't with us, but he is. I know a lot of friends of mine and people that I know, not even friends of mine, they took the second shot and they were sick. The next day they couldn't make it to work. And, and some said it felt like an 18-wheeler had ran over them. Some of them sweated. Even, you know, my son said he was cold and shaking and stuff. But it was just only for a little while. The Lord was still with them. Bought them out, y'all. Come right on out and now they as good as brand new. Same way. So, I'm knowing quite a few people said they got sick. You know, the symptoms. Had the side effect from the shot. And some people said they didn't bother them at all. To God be the glory, however it is. Everybody is good. He said he will be with you even until the end of the world. So why? We can't worry about what man do. A man can't do nothing to hurt you. Because God is with you. He's still with you. Going through with you. Bringing you out. And bringing you out better than you were before you went in. Now, I want to do it. Hebrew 10 and 25 say, not do not forget to forsaking the assembly with one another. I'm telling you about going, go in the building, assemble yourself. We can like to say when we assemble ourselves when we at work, you know, we got a little crowd there together. And if you discussing the word of God, you know, you assembling yourself. But if you're on your job, everybody don't want to hear the word. And then it's a time and it's a place for everything. They don't want to hear it. You ain't got them. I mean, just leave it alone. You're supposed to leave it in the world. You ain't got to force nothing on nobody. But if you come in the building, in the church, and the pastor preaching the word, if you don't want to hear it, then you got to leave. It's up to you now. Now, if you ain't going to hear a word from the Lord, and you just don't want to hear it, you can up and go. But when you're on your job, you can't up and go. If they don't want to hear it, you go, hey. Don't say anything else. I don't want to hear that. I don't say nothing else. So, yes, we need to go in the church, the building, and fellowship with one another. That's how you get your strength. That's how you build up. We all touch an agreement on the same thing. We love the Lord. We know the Lord. We he is with us all. Our spirit is on the same accord. So, we can build strength out of one another. So, it's good that they are opening the church back up when we are able to go back in the building and worship the Lord to hear the word from a preacher. That's how you're going to know. And now you should be able to hear and we should be on fire. The church should just be on fire for the Lord. Because God has 
been truly good and he has blessed us. Blessed us, blessed us. I have a wonderful treasure, a gift without any measure. We'll be traveling together. My Bible and I, I got a gift of treasure, a gift without any measure. We'll be traveling together. My Bible and I. Who? My Bible and I. Oh, my Bible and I. We'll be traveling together. My Bible and I. Oh, oh my Bible and I. Yes, my Bible and I will be traveling together. My Bible and I. That's a gift, a treasure is your Bible. When you go in the world, you should travel with your Bible. You should have a Bible. If you're not with you, you should have it in your mind. It should be manifested in your mind. A gift without measure. You got a treasure in this Bible. So, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead on and subscribe to the channel. If you want to leave me a comment, leave me a comment. Hey, that had me going, y'all. But uh, then, if you want to be notified when I put down any other video, go ahead and hit the notification button and hit all. Most of my watchers is on Facebook. So, you on Facebook, go ahead on to YouTube and subscribe to the channel. You can't subscribe to the channel unless you go on YouTube, get you, get you a username and password, and go ahead on and subscribe to the channel. So we can keep this going, reading the word together. So, with that being said, Jesus loves you so, 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 so much. And so do I. And have a blessed and wonderful, glorious rest of the day. And I will see you on the next video.